Residential. A residential? Yeah. Is this the week long residential? Yeah, that, that's a week though. Isn't it? Oh, that's what they advertise as Monday to Friday. Well, it is Monday to Friday, but they have a whole day of school first on Monday, and then go off on the coach. Monday afternoon, I think, well, that's not exactly what was advertised. So wow! This ruinously expensive trip is less than you thought it was. We can still come in our own clothes, though. So they've got to do the morning. We've got to do the whole day. They leave about half past two, I think. Really? It's crazy, isn't it? That's not right. Yeah, that's not right. If they're charging you for a whole day, yeah, it's, it's five hundred pounds. What? And, it, and they get, they come back about three o'clock on the Friday. So the Friday's even cut short. So he's really going to be. So that's like right, only what four three, nights, yeah, three so nights, three days basically. And five hundred pounds. Wow. You know what it used to be when the, the older kids were there. They used to get a full five days. For less yeah, money. it used to be pick, picked up about seven o'clock in the morning. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and come back late on Friday. Yeah. Five full days it used to be. Now it's. Yeah, wow. Really I just saw the magpie go by. Did you see? It is a magpie, isn't it? Yes. I swear, people think that I was like. Like imagining that it was a bed. I just looked through the mirror and just saw like a black hood flying by. Yeah. But that's ridiculous. Only Crazy. four days for five hundred pounds. Yeah. Oh, I feel uh, like they should right. lower it to like only like two hundred. That is ridiculous. Is it the whole year? The residential they used to offer. You just go to Derbyshire for the week. Yeah. And it was fantastic. I mean, but they were set up early in the morning, so. So come 10 o'clock Monday morning, they were there and they did something that day, you know? Yeah. And then they would do something again on the Friday and come back after that activity on the Friday. Yeah. Here, yeah, this, this is, I don't know, it's crazy, I don't understand it. So where are you going on your residential? For Cayford. Cayford? Caythorpe is called. Oh, Cleethorpe. Caythorpe. Caythorpe. Yeah, I think it's over near Norwich, I mean, it's not a good place. So what are you doing there, do you know? Uh, just some fun activities. Like what? Uh, rifle shooting, archery. Uh, sort of thing that don't cost five hundred pounds. No, that doesn't even cost five hundred pounds. <laughs> sort of thing you have for minutes if you really wanted to. You know? Yeah. And that is like free, I think. Aren't you just, just drive down there for free? Well, I mean, like when I done the residential for um, brownies, I had twenty brownies, and we had to pay for the diesel for the um, for the generator as well. But it was three nights, two days, and that was one hundred and fifty pounds. Very expensive. Uh, it's not what it was built. Certainly not a week away. No. It's, it's a strange one as well, because some of the kids are going to be going away from home really for the first time, especially considering COVID, because they do one in year four as well. Yeah. Um, and so they're sort of better, but if you want to wait goodbye to your kids, you have to turn up at the school half past two or so. That's, this is just so weird. No, that's not a week long residential. No. And how many parents can be able to just take a day off work or time out of work to go away and go away to the kids? And no. You've not thought this through at all, you know, as usual. It's not a William Law, is it? Yeah. No. When I think about what that school used to be, what it is now, it's, it's not really cool. That is ridiculous. You're not getting value for money, are you? No, no, not so. And the kids are going to be that time in the afternoon doing a full day at school. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird all around. But it's, I don't understand. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be grumpy. They've yeah. got to travel on a coach for an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. And then they're going to eat. And then they're going to eat something. Then it'll be getting pajamas and going to bed. So by the time they've eaten and all that, you're looking at half six, seven. And then no, they said as soon as we get there, it's just gonna, we're going to straight, after that, we're going to do an activity. We're not watching an activity, but it's going to be quite late. That's going to be really late. Well, you're going to be exhausted what mentally, you physically. You're going to be hungry. They had really haven't thought that through. Okay, 
thought I was going mad. I checked back to the original paper that was sent out in September about it. And what did they say there? It was going to be, you know, this short. And they did. They said Monday to Friday. That's how it's built, Monday to Friday. And, and technically speaking, it is Monday to Friday, but it's not much of Monday. No, it's, it's not Monday not to Friday, Friday, though, is it? Because they're no. going Monday night. No, that's it. We're going to arrive there at like 3.30. Oh, I would I doubt, doubt it. You won't get there for 3.30. If you're not leaving until half past two, you might be there about half past four. Because remember you're on a coach and it's rush hour. And we're going to get you all loaded up, count you five times. Yeah. You're not going to be there for half three, no way. Basically the same thing. Yeah. Only this time they lie about it in five days. I think it's just three days again, really. In all honesty. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just. I think what it is, rather than sort of the Derbyshire one used to be kind of almost in-house, if you like. Yeah. They would take over the running of it themselves and arrange activities themselves. Yeah. Whereas now what they do is take the kids down, hand it over to another company and they go there you look after our children for us for a few days and that's kind of how it works and so for that you pay a price wow. especially with all the health and safety stuff that comes with things like canoeing and whatever else yes i suppose because i've done mine with um girl guiding i had to get all the licenses mm -hmm. so i got the licenses for going away like night away two nights away um, five nights away and under canvas. I had to get all of them licenses and then I had to do all the budgeting for them and you had to work it out per child, per night and how much per child, per day, food wise. So, I mean, like for a box of cereal, you, it says six, uh, like 20 servings on some of them. But you can actually get 30 servings out of them if you do the proper, like, yeah. what, uh, three grams of Cocoa Pops, for example. You can actually get 30 out of them. But I've got um, a thing where you put all the cereal in, you just do one twist and you get food. Yeah, yeah they're not much eye on the cost these days. It's kind of, um, they keep saying you're the best you the most. How would they do a fundraiser for this and that? And you think, no, well, seriously, <laughs> enough now. There's plenty of money's coming out now, we don't need to do that anymore. Well, what is, what is the fundraiser for this oh, time? No, 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 no. There's something about we've got to put so much money in so we can throw glue or something at the head teacher, I don't know. And you're just like, it's a kind of open ended. It's not like there's a prize at the end, but it's just give us your money, basically. Like, oh, wow. Let's see how well that goes down, shall we? Especially a guy like me, you have to realise it was a three day, not a five day. I'm sure that is wrong, because they've sold that wrong to you, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, it's more than a bit naughty, I've got to be honest. That is very, very, very naughty. I mean, especially for over £500. Well, just, uh, just under 500 Oh, just under 500 That's still very still, naughty, oh, it's though. still massively expensive, yeah, yeah. If you say that you've got two or three children in that school, and they all want to do a residential, that that's well over a grand for three children. Yeah, the other one you didn't be anywhere near as expensive. But this is what happens, you see, you're paying outside companies to do it for you on 
taking on the planning and organisation yourself. But this is what happens. It would have been cheaper for them to go to um, go away. Yeah, it's cheaper to do almost anything. Yeah. Then that. Well, the the PGL shoe. or something like that. Well, that they've got five, they've four days in Derbyshire when they used to do that um, before Mrs. Cunningham started. Um, for less money, way less money, when they get three days on this today. I mean, that shows you all the things that I've Not good. And the range of things they've got to do as well are crazy. You know, like say, Cardiff Mountains and all sorts of things. Whereas here, effectively, it's going to be the same thing they do almost every time they go away there, because these this places are always the same. You know? Yeah. That's like, like uh, Grafton. I'm sure it's Grafton. It, it will be Grafton. That's the other one they do. Yeah, that's like by um, Buckton Roundabout, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So they've got um, a climbing wall there. Like I said, Jacob's Ladder and... The activities are amazing there. We d I've done that with the brownies. And that's so that they, they do that in year four, and if you've done that, then effectively they're going to go and do the same thing again. Yeah. There's no difference, or very little difference, just a different location. But the Grafton one always was quite expensive compared to the Darfshire one because, again, the health and safety aspect, yeah. you have to have it properly staffed. Yeah, exactly. I know when we went there, we done it as a district event, and I think I took six, six or se uh, six or seven brownies with me, and I was so hot on like I want to know where you are at all times. You've got to say that, and I've made where I hide this uh, bit, yeah. and it was like, oh, we've got brownie missing, we've got a brownie missing, and it was like, well, mine are not missing, mine are there. It's like that's what you need to put that. On your uh, brownies. So what I'm thinking as well, so okay, if, they, if they're booked up this place to be there, you know, say five o'clock on a Monday, yeah. take them somewhere else beforehand. Yeah. So I mean, take them to a museum, take them somewhere anywhere. Yeah. You've got the coach anyway. Take them somewhere. Take them to the zoo. Take them to a park, take them to the zoo. And the same on the way back. Be inventive, leave early in the morning if they're not going to do any activities, and just go somewhere else. I don't understand it. I just... That is really hard to understand, isn't it? Yeah. I've been speaking to some of the, especially some of the teachers who've been there a few years, and they always say things like, we offer to organise the stuff the way it used to be, but they always say no. They don't want to know. And that's more worrying, really. You know, if you're running out of volunteers to actually put themselves out to do this stuff, that's one thing. But the fact that there are people there that remember what it used to be like, go, we'd be happy to do it. Yeah. You know, it's like a sports day, like it used to be. Sports day was a proper family day out once upon a time. Now you turn up for five minutes, watch your kid do a race, and they're off again. Yeah, that's it. Well, I found that because, like, with the brownies, we used to do the, um, the carnival. Mm -hmm. So we used to do the float. And it would be, I'd do two sleepovers, and then sleepovers is where we do everything for the float. Yeah. If you don't turn up to the sleepovers, then you can't be on the float because you're not you're not going to go go into a competition and not do any of the work and then possibly win and get recognition for it because it's the same it was the same ones all the time and I got told that I was being mean I should allow them to come through and it's like but why these guys are doing all the work you're just rocking up. And getting all the glory out of yeah, it. Yeah, you've got to run the hard work, haven't you? Yeah. yeah I'm for that. And when it comes to running the stall, because um, my brownie unit had a stall, had the same stall for 10 years. And I would be on the stall myself because not one parent would volunteer. It's oh no, we can't stop. But like towards the end, you're seeing all the parents there, so I would be. Be up since like five o'clock, prepping the lorry, getting the lorry all dressed up. Well, that's an important that, that situation over there at the school, the school association has become pretty critical actually because they they are running out of parents now to run the school association. And COVID's made it doubly worse. Yeah. I mean, they were running on low numbers, but COVID Bless means that no you. volunteer at all now. No. But that doesn't help with the school being so distant all the time. No. You know, with the, the bigger gap they create 
to me as well, the school association should be more as well about like the old parent teacher, the dog thinks, yeah, where you would sit down here and voice voices yeah. of concern. There's no forum at the school at all to voice your concerns. No. That's that's really anybody bad. that goes and sort of writes an email says not very happy about this, they just close ranks and that's it. It's almost like they want the, 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 the parents to be dispersed so they can't sort of prevent their anger and get over anything, you know. Are they turning themselves into uh, an academy? Yeah. Are they an academy already? I don't think so. I'm not too sure. Something it's talked about. Because academies, I mean, one of my friends, he's a head teacher of an academy, and he's worked himself up from a student teacher all the way up. I think he was a head teacher by the time he was 26. He done really well. Now they've gone into an academy, he wants to leave. He wants to leave teaching altogether because there is no backup from the academies. I have to say, something, as much as I criticise the way the school is now, um, the changes were coming, even when Mr Williams was there. And I do think that a lot of the problem is the, the switch over to... It used to be run by the council, didn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's changed. And now it's all money making. Yeah, it, it's something's fundamentally changed at schools. It's not nice. Um, there's a lot of problems. I think at some point they're going to have to sit there this didn't work. Yeah. Whatever this plan was, because it was Blair, wasn't it? And the Blair's given they changed it. Yeah. But, um, no opposition from the Tories either, so they were obviously all happy with it. And then when something goes through without screaming, it's a bad idea normally. My, it ended up being yeah. a bad idea. My mum used to say, when anything came out about raising money for anything, my mum used to say, oh, the head teacher wants a new car, because if it was raising money for anything, four or five months later, they'd turn up with a new car. I think it was better than those authorities, just in so many ways. I think, it's, you know, you don't know how it's going to work until you, you try and practice. Yeah. But in practice, the schools are not doing very well, I don't think. No, it's like on YouTube and that I've just published all of my exam results from when I was at Bretton Woods. Oh, I like Bretton Woods. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went skiing with them in Austria and first day there, I fell over, broke my hip, shoulder, I completely crashed the um, left side of my body. And when I come back to England, because they under underinsured us all, Instead of being flown back, I came back on the back of a coach, which damaged me even more. So I spent nine months in hospital. I had to learn to walk again. And all that time, because it was GCSEs, the first year that actually done them, so it was like two thirds of your... You must be the same age as me then, because I was the first year of GCSEs. I'm 50 this year. Well, I think you were the second year of GCSEs then. I was the first year that done the... The two years of coursework. Yeah, no, 1988 I left. I left so, in 89. Yeah, we did GCSEs in 88, so you must have been the second year in. We was the one that done the full lot, so the two year, um, so fourth and fifth year, we had to do all the coursework and then the final exam. So you guys done... Yeah, we did two years of coursework. You did you? Yeah. Oh, well, we were branded as the first year to do GCSEs. Well, that we were perhaps the experimental year. Yeah. Now we did GCC. It was a shambles. Basically. It was. Yeah, I mean, was I was shambles. in hospital for nine months and I didn't get any coursework. So all my exam results are from the exams. And I've got E's, F's, G's. I remember <laughs> they set us, I think we did English language and English literature, they set us 20 assignments on each. Yep. And I think we're about three weeks before the deadline, and I've done about five. <laughs> So I wrote all the rest of them out, and then, you know, people, and they, were, they were obviously lovely shit, I mean, honest to God. Uh, with mine, um, I came back in, I had to do my English oral. Oh, I'll skip one. <laughs> and, um, and it was like, well, we, need, we want you to talk about what happened. And I said, I don't want to talk about it, it was too traumatic. And then they, then they wrote down, the examiner wrote down, Fail to give any information. He was like, no, I just don't want to talk about the accident, um, coming back to England, like trying to learn how to walk again, being told I could be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I didn't go to one, and they just gave me a three. It was like the halfway house. Like, okay. I've got a three. Yeah, <laughs> most people probably do. Yeah, I've got a three, um, and. My mum, my mum appealed it, 
And it was like, it's down there that I failed to actually engage. It was like, no. My French, I don't know how I passed my French. They asked me all these questions, and I haven't done it for two years because I was in hospital. And so they started asking me questions, and I came back with them at questions, the only questions I knew. And the examiners were laughing at me because every time they asked me something, I would come back at them. And so I didn't actually answer their questions, but yeah, I passed just by the skin of my teeth. I think I've got an E for French. I'm also bad at French. Yeah, but I didn't do it for two years. I did four and a half years of German, and I still couldn't speak a word of it. And then it was one of those lessons where you were your best mate. And it's just messing about the whole time. Um, languages is one of those things, what do you get behind? You never yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. dyslexic as well. So trying to write something in another language when I can't write in English properly is really, really hard. They do it differently as well. I'm quite interested in talking to the way the kids in secondary schools seem to be a lot better now. I, I talk about primary schools being worse, but secondary schools do seem to be a lot better. They, they really break down the language for them into whether it's listening to it, speaking it or you're writing it. I said, no, you even differentiate this with us. You just no. don't throw it in with... I got, the, I got on, on all of my stuff. I remember bringing it home and I was going, Mum, the teacher wrote something because I can't read her writing. It was like, oh, you're lazy again. I was like, I just don't understand what they're saying, Mum. I can't... They're, they're writing stuff on the blackboard and before I copied it, they rubbed it off. And it was like... those days. Yeah. Is that where they're born now, do they? No! <laughs> Oh God, I used to hate that. <laughs> now it's all, you know, computers and projectors and things like that. No chalk inside. So I have to, I, I saw something the other day and I had to come out to Lily and just say, what does that say, Lily? Because I just couldn't work it out. The reason why you didn't mess around the school in my days is because you used to have board rubbers. If you were messing yeah. about the board rubber, you used to become a weapon. It was. <laughs> <laughs> no. Harley Quinn. No. No, no. Um, do you remember Mr. Uh, is it Buddle? Buddle, yeah. Yeah. I saw him on the golf course about 10 years ago. Did you? Quite weird. I remember being in this class and one of the girls behind me was chewing and his big thing was chewing gum in class oh. uh, and then he just went if you if you're looking at me you know what to do and he lobs the rubber <laughs> Harley <laughs> talking I mean I liked Mr yeah. Rubble and it was actually him that <laughs> sorted out that my dyslexia. He's a good teacher. He was an amazing teacher. We were, we were a terrible class <laughs> and took yeah. to his Classroom and he really saw the Yeah, he was, he was amazing. He really did help me with my dyslexia. Yeah, I saw him golf. It's funny because when I left school, I was about five foot five, something like that, really quite small still. Yeah. And so to him, to me, then, was obviously a grown man and I was still a child. So yeah. I saw him golf course and I towered over him. I was like, that, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 
can I do economics? And he put me in for it, and then the teacher brought me back round and went, I'm not having them crutches in my kitchen. She couldn't be confused, I was such a middleware. Oh, no. Well, you can try to add one the last yeah. time while we were there. It was just, it was just better. Every lesson was better. It was crazy. All the way. I thought it's all right from now. It's back. Yeah. No one's going to look at that. Um, oh, yeah. You know, the boys, the boys who was in metalwork, one of them wanted yeah, to get finished. out of yeah. school. Yeah. So he put his hand in yeah. the vice, and then he got the metal um, wire and he went like that straight over his own knuckles. Yeah. And yeah. he went yeah. goes, yeah. Now yeah. I can go home. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take plenty of breaks. Um, yeah. And it wasn't even him who done it. No, no, it wasn't one of the students. Yeah, one of the students yeah. who shouldn't have been welding. Yeah. 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 The scout group is quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing really well, especially. Yeah. There you go. Do you want some wax or gel ones? No?